Hello, my name is Kalen Garrett, and this is the virtual presentation for my ICRA 2020 paper on multi-step manipulation in partially observable environments. This is work done jointly at NVIDIA and MIT. Our goal is for autonomous robots to be able to reason about and act intelligently in human environments. These environments are often semi-structured in that the robot may know roughly the types of objects that may be present, and maybe some priors about where they would be in the world. However, there is an enormous variety in the number of goal specifications by the human, the varying number of objects and types of objects that are in the world, the different late initial configuration of these objects, and also the initial belief of the robot. This is why we believe using model-based reasoning, where we give the robot a model of what it can do, uh, will enable the robot to generalize across a very large number of these circumstances. We'll formulate model-based reasoning in these environments as a task and motion planning problem, where the robot not only has to plan a sequence of objects to manipulate, as well as the low-level motions that can successfully achieve all these manipulations. These problems can be quite difficult for a number of reasons. There might be many types of manipulations the robot can perform, such as picking, pushing, pulling, or pouring. The state's usually very high dimensional because of the many objects that are present. And the robot might need to act over long horizons to achieve several goals in sequence. However, mostly in this paper, we'll be focusing on trying to deal with problems that are stochastic and that the robot's actions actually are noisy, maybe in a very low level way or a high level way in terms of failure, and the world's partially observable. In this environment, we have these two Kinect cameras that are attached to the world frame, and they can be very easily occluded by fixed objects, movable objects, doors, drawers, and even the robot itself. Here's an example of a task we'd like to solve. The goal here is for the robot to believe that the spam's in the bottom drawer. It starts off with a uniform prior over both drawers. When it opens the bottom drawer, it fails to actually detect the spam, and thus adjusts its belief about where the spam is in the world. Next, it opens the top drawer and then gets a successful detection of the spam. However, the robot has to do something sneaky to actually solve this problem. It must first place the spam in an intermediate location, such as on the tabletop, because it can't actually open both doors at the same time due to the width of the robot's gripper. But robots are able to su successfully deduce this, place the spam on the counter, and then move the spam to the bottom drawer and successfully complete the task. Our prior work addressed the first three challenges I mentioned about TAMP the diverse actions, high dimensional state, and long horizons. Our approach was to extend an AI planning language to support mixed discrete continuous planning with high dimensional values, such as object poses, which are six dimensional, or robot configurations, which can be greater than seven dimensional. Here's an example of a pick action when written in this framework. However, note that three of the parameters are very high dimensional values. Our key insight was to extend an AI planning language to allow the declaration of streams, which can encode sampling procedures, performing common robotics operations like sampling placements of an object on top of a region, or taking an object of placement in the grasp and performing inverse kinematics to sample from the set of robot configurations that can successfully perform the pick or place. And the cool thing about this approach is that our planners are agnostic to the implementation of these streams. They treat them as black boxes, and so all you have to do is define the streams and the planners can go. The key challenge in working in these domains is that low-level geometric constraints can actually impact what you do at a high level. In this example, the spam starts off behind the movable sugar box, and the robot has to intentionally pick up the sugar box to potentially detect if the spam is behind it in some pose. In order to do this, the robot has to reason about both the high level and low level simultaneously. And again, intentionally manipulate the world to facilitate future observations. In order to solve these kinds of problems, we first need a representation for our belief, our internal distribution over our current state, that supports multiple modalities. In this example, the green block could be behind the sugar or the cracker box. However, given that a lot of the other region on this table is visible, it's unlikely there. And this has two peaks to it, and so we need to do something that actually goes beyond having a discrete partition or using a Gaussian distribution for our belief. Namely, what we do here is we use particle filters. We represent weighted samples of object poses, as visualized here, where greens are poses with high probability and blacks are poses with low probability. And we also do something where we factor these beliefs to be independent across each object, which will allow us to reason about changes uh, in one object at a time. Next, we need to extend our action model to operate over probability, probability distributions of quantities rather than point estimates of their values. Namely here, we have a specified a detect action, which takes in PB1, which is the prior pose belief for an object, OBS, which is a detection cone for where we think it could be, and PB2, which is the posterior distribution of the pose. 
Our key insight at this stage is to use our previously introduced notion of streams to implement common Bayesian inference operations. The first one takes in a prior and samples potential observations. The second one takes in the prior in an observation and produces the posterior distribution in a functional relationship. The third one takes in the prior in an observation and produces the probability of that observation, which will factor into our, object, our detect cost, as we'll see. And the final one takes in another distribution over the pose of an object and the potential observation, and returns whether that distribution likely is including the observation with high probability. And this factors into the precondition of the detect action. Because our prior planners are deterministic planners and don't support averaging over many possible outcomes, we have to do something called action determinization, which is where we actually reduce the problem to a deterministic problem that's approximate. In our work, we use something called self-loop determinization. It's inspired based on the self-loop MDP, which is a simple MDP shown on the right, where actions have outcomes that either take you to a state or return you to the prior state that you applied the action. And what you can show actually is that you can reduce this problem to a minimum cost planning problem under the appropriate transform action costs shown on the left, and deterministic planning will produce the optimal policy. In our work, basically what we do is we let the planner choose the observation it can have, but penalize according to this transform action cost. Because we're performing planning online rather than computing a policy offline, we need to replan after receiving each observation. This may be due to simple things such as base actuation area, or more significant things such as not getting a detection that we anticipated. One caveat though is that a naive replanning strategy might actually induce a policy that never actually achieves the goal. Consider the task on the right where the goal of the object of the robot is just to pick up the green object. Here the robot keeps finding valid plans involving moving the base and then moving the arm and picking the object, but because each plan doesn't actually make progress in reducing the number of actions towards achieving the goal, it never actually completes this task. Our way around this is to actually reuse past plans, namely the structure and constant parameters there, in order to both accelerate future replanning and also force it to ensure it makes progress towards actually achieving the goal. Consider the following example corresponding to the previous video. Suppose we find a plan that involves moving the base, moving the arm, and picking object A, which we'll say is the green block. First, the robot executes move base, and the rest of the tail is left unused. Then our process is to take any value that's either an observation or derived from an observation and convert it into a free parameter, as indicated by the wildcard symbol. Then all that's left are the static structure of the plan, the names of entities involved, and any constants there, such as a grasp. What we can do then is take that uh, plan with the free parameters and transform the problem to force the planner to actually adhere to this structure, preventing the problem we saw before. Replanning with constraints results into the following policy where we first start with a prior belief of the world. The robot then observes the world and updates its belief. If the belief achieves the goal, then it can terminate successfully. Then we first replan with constraints if they're available. If we find a plan, then we can execute its first action immediately and observe the world again. Otherwise, we need to replan without these constraints. It might be the case that something more significant has happened in terms of a unexpected effect, which prevents us from finding any plan at all. If we fail to find a plan there, then the remote terminates because it's unable to find any course of action. Otherwise, it executes the first action of that plan and then reobserves the world. The ability to replan in two stages allows the robot to both adhere to prior plans and more efficiently follow them, and also to deviate if something more substantial happens that's surprising. In both these examples, the goal is for the spam on the stovetop, and a spam starts out with a uniform prior over the tabletop. In the left example, the robot first picks up the cheese it box and finds actually the spam behind it, and so it can terminate very quickly. However, in the right example, the robot first picks up the sugar box, fails to receive a detection for the spam, and then must manipulate the cracker box. It actually picks up the cracker box twice, the first to get a general location of its position, and the second time to get a fine pose estimate to be able to successfully pick it, then place it on the stovetop and complete the task. Overall, the takeaways of this talk are first that low-level geometric constraints can actually impact what actions you take at a high level in terms of what to manipulate in order to receive possible observations. We deal with partial observability by first planning and belief space, where we use streams to define operations that sample observations, compute posterior beliefs, and test visibility with computed rays. We use self-loop determinization to reduce planning to a deterministic PVL stream problem, where we use action likelihoods and action costs. And finally, we reuse the structure of plans found sequentially in online replanning in order to first make the planning more efficient and also to ensure that the induced policy overall makes steps towards achieving the goal. Thank you.